So, name's Adam Compton. Presentation is Learn From Your Mistakes. If this isn't the talk you want to be in, that's your mistake. No, I know. They don't get better than that. I'm sorry. So, uh, who am I? What am I doing? And why am I doing it? Well, I'm Adam Compton. I'm a security researcher, pen tester, programmer, hillbilly, or what you want to call me. I'm fine with that. I'm not a presenter. I don't present that often. When I do, it's stuff like this. It's more of the humorous, comical nature, just trying to get stories out there, helping people out. Um, I might stutter, I might stammer, what have you. Spare with me. We'll get through it. What am I presenting? I've been to, I've been around for a while. I've been doing pen testing for 15 years plus now. Probably longer than a lot of you. Maybe not as long as some of you. Depends on how old you are and when you got into it. But uh, I've been to a lot of conferences. I've met a lot of people starting out, what have you. And one thing I kept noticing is everybody kept idolizing what they were referring to as the rock stars of the industry. Like, oh my goodness, look at so-and-so. Look at Jason over there. He and it gives such perfect hugs. I don't know. I can never do that. Now, I mean, but the thing is, everybody kept idolizing all these rock stars and going, man, I can never be like that. I, um, there's, they, they know all the stuff. They make all the right choices. They, they get in and they, in 15 minutes, they own the network, stuff like this. I'm like, that's great. They can do that, but they had to get there from somewhere. They didn't just wake up one day and go, you know what? I know all the answers. I can do all this. And honestly, they still don't know all the answers. They're always learning. But And I'm like, but no one's ever talking about, look, you need to learn. You need to learn from your stage. You need to build up your repertoire of techniques, of knowledge, and all that to get there. And more times than not, that's going to involve making mistakes, learning, and just going. It's life. So I just wanted to share out there a little bit of some of the things that I'm not a rock star by any means, but still, I've made my own mistakes. I feel pretty confident in my current abilities, but it took a while to get here. Uh, I've made like, more than my share, and I've been around other people who I would consider very competent assessors, and social engineers, what have you, over the years, and they make mistakes too. It's just one of those things that I wanted to get that out there so people know that it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. And why should you listen to me? Well, because I'm in front of the podium at the moment, or behind the podium, so tough luck. Oh, just a epitome. I mean, it's not always your mistake that you're having to deal with. I don't know how many times I've been working with customers, uh, been on the call with them, and I'll hear, hear the sales guy come out and say, Oh, yeah, um, our guys are great. Don't worry about it. If you have a vulnerability, they're going to find it. And I'm sitting back there just cringing the entire time. I'm like, don't say that. We may find it. We'll try our best to find it. Uh, there might be something out there that we just don't get time to get to. We might overlook for whatever reason. There might be some network issues that we can't get to that. Whatever the reason, we will try to get, find everything, but I have yet to meet somebody who can honestly say that we will find everything wrong with your system in a given set amount of time. There might be a system offline. They might uh, be reverting to an image during that. Who knows what? But, yeah, given infinite amount of time and resources, you might be able to. But over the course of an engagement, a week, two weeks, a month even, you can do your best effort. You're not going to guarantee that you're going to find everything. And one of my favorite ones is the bottom one. It's a variant on that is we actually, I was on an engagement where the the customer came back and said, yeah, you can't use your laptops. We'll provide you laptops. You can't bring anything in. We'll give you stock laptops. Well, okay, can we download stuff off? The yeah, yeah, you can't download anything. You ought to be as if you were just given this laptop as an employee. Have fun. It puts a little crimp in your style. You're used to having your tools and all that handy with you. Um, things that you can code out on the fly, fine, but some of the other things... You just have to find ways around it. You have to continue on and find your way through it. I don't like doing that, but it does come up periodically. You're going to have to deal with it. So, the majority of this presentation is going to be a story time. And yes, it is the sad, sad story of the world's most unfortunate consulting team, or 
you'll make the decision. So, Once upon a time, there were two security consultants, Jebediah and Bob. Jebediah was a junior consultant, helping out as needed, and Bob, the one, the, the handsomer one there with the handsome. Yeah, grammar is not one of my fortes, so sorry. Uh, nor is speaking. Well, Bob being the senior, I just needed representatives. I could have picked people I know, but chose to keep the innocent uh, or the guilty hidden away. Once upon a time, the two consultants, Jebediah and Bob, got a new engagement from a large entity. I'll leave their names undisclosed. But this engagement is going to involve many different aspects. It's going to have social engineering, on-site assessments, external assessment, wide variety of things. And other than the issues that came up from the beginning with the sales staff asking the statements that I had earlier, such as, oh yeah, our guys can find everything, we can do all this. They took it with stride, they're going to get into the engagement, they're going to do what they could. So starting out, uh, Jebediah, being the more junior of the two, was assigned the task of going out and doing an initial uh, recon of this network, of the external assessment, doing your standard in-map scans, doing your typical scans of that nature. It was a Friday afternoon, so things didn't get double checked as well as they should. Well, I don't know if I have that on time or not, but um, they didn't have the. It was a Friday afternoon, they didn't double check everything as well as they should. Jebediah typed in the IP range, hit go, they called it a day and left. Well, somewhere around the early afternoon on Saturday, they got a call from their boss saying, um, can you come into the office? We have an issue. So they came in, talking it over. Turns out that uh, a large uh, soda manufacturer out of somewhere in Georgia had called in asking why they were being scanned. Well, we are not scanning you. So they quickly went to do triage. They went to check their IP ranges that they're scanning. And in their rush to do it, to, to get it typed in, get going, they left off the 4 at the end of the CIDR notation on their in-map scan. So in scanning, blah slash 24 is blah slash 2. Much different target range. Much different. Yeah, so... It turned out to be okay. After a little bit of talk and discussion, nothing was wrong. The customer, the soda company, just wanted to know what was going on. They saw it coming from the IP range there. And at the end of it, everything was happy, and they just asked, hey, did you find anything on us? Please tell us. So everything was happy, and they moved on from there. But just lesson learned from this, always double check. It was the measure twice, cut once sort of mentality. If you're going to type in an automated scan, you're going to type in whatever. You're going to run some scan. You're going to manually target. It doesn't matter. Make sure your IPs are correct. Make sure your host names are correct. A one-off error can cause a huge difference in the who you're targeting, what the responses are, um, things sort uh, as well as uh, oh, how many times do you want to try to brute force this password? Just try one uh, brute force attempt on each one is a lot different than uh, 100 or 10. That's the different difference between checking account and locking out every account on the network. Big difference. So. After they got the initial recon done, Bob, the more senior, is like, okay, I can take this. Uh, this is social engineering. I've done this before. I can go with this. He went out, was confident with his abilities, grabbed uh, the template that he had used many times before, had great success with it, loaded it up, put in the, I mean, put in the uh, target users and usernames, um, email addresses, hit go. Then that's when he realized he hadn't changed out the customer's target uh, URL, I mean, not URL, um, logo, customer's name, things of that nature. So not only did he not verify anything, but now he's inadvertently shared previous customer information to some degree with a new customer, which isn't the happiest thing in the world to do as a contractor. But luckily in this case, the new customer 
thought it was just a good example of a um, not so great fishing attempt. And there was a few hits on it, not many. Cust I mean, the consulting team came back, they redid it a little bit, put a new uh, spin on it, sent out a couple of new emails, phishing, I mean, social engineering, uh, pretexting with it. They got their success. They got in. They got what they needed. But it was one of those things. It's the same as before. Double check what you're doing. Uh, don't get complacent. If you've done something a hundred times, doesn't mean you're not going to uh, screw up the hundred and first time. Uh, same sort of mentality. If you're going to have an accident, you're most likely you're going to have it within five miles of where you live because you're complacent. Bob here, he'd done this email, he'd done this phishing attack, he's done this campaign many times before. He missed the most simple thing of just verifying that what he's sending to the customer is what he meant to send to the customer. External pen testing. Oh, so after hours and hours and hours of testing, Bob and Jebediah are sitting there, they're like, finally, they're doing the happy dance, they got access to the target system. They're like, yay, happy, happy for me. But for some reason, some of the network traffic was a little wonky. They couldn't get certain things that worked the way they wanted. It was late at night again. Everybody's tired. They'd been going at this for a good number of hours. Not sure what was going on when Jebediah, the younger guy, sat back and said, You know what? If we enabled the firewall on that host, we could see the logs of what is going on and see what's wrong. Bob, being tired and just grumpy at that point, said, you know what? Sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. And they lost access to their host. So, there's not a lot to really be said about that other than that's just a compound of issues after issues in that. Fundamentally, I think the issue was that everybody was just tired. Everybody I know is like, oh, you need to keep going until you get to the go. No, there's a certain point where you should just step back, Reassess what's going on, set up some sort of reverse back door that you might be able to get into later, what have you, but there's a point where you're going to get diminishing returns. If you're tired, you're going to make mistakes, just back off a little bit because you might just deny yourself that one access you have into the network otherwise. So, for the internal engagement, the team got together, they're like, we have to get our shots, we have to get everything we need, we're flying off to the customer, flying off to wherever you wish you want to go to. There's a lot of things that uh, they should have done before they went, such as get familiar with the local customs, get familiar with uh, the, just uh, like um, what's his, um, Jack Daniel said this morning, just need to, the jokes, are you, your kind of jokes or your kind of sarcasm going to go over well with the customer. Because sometimes you're going to, as an industry, we tend to be a little sarcastic. Look at Twitter. You're going to notice it. Go to conferences. You're going to notice it. Some cultures, sarcasm doesn't go over well. At least the sarcasm that we have. It's going to be localized. So they get to their target. They get to the customer. They get onto the network. They set everything up. Customer says, all right, here's your IPs that you need to target. Huge list of them. We can divide this up between us. Divide and conquer. We're going to be great with this. So they split the IP ranges up. Jebediah takes half. Bob takes half. They start the scanning. They get done. Later, they will find out that when they divided up the IPs, they missed the range. Not that bad overall, considering the amount of targets they had. But it does turn out to be a little bad because the customer knew there was a few vulnerabilities on the network. that They were going to double check the results later on to make sure that the consultants did their job. And those vulnerabilities happened to exist on IPs within the range that they forgot to scan. Which came back to bite them later on. But it's another one of those things that double check everything. Uh, reassess at the end of the day. What did you get done? What did you get done? Oh, great. Oh, we're still needing this. That would have saved a lot of headache for everyone involved. Not only that, but their IP showed up in the IP ranges that they were going to be scanning for the network blocks. And for whatever reason, 
forgot to apply patches, forgot to enable their own firewalls, not pointing fingers, but for some reason, their IPs appeared to be the most vulnerable ones on the network. At which point they sat there for a couple hours one day, just hacking into each other's boxes, documenting everything. They were going to have an awesome report out of this. We found all these ways in until they started sharing notes with each other, at which point they're like, oh, that's my IP. Oh, that, oops. So, documentation, sharing information, it's going to be key on these kind of engagements, especially larger ones. When you connect to a network, try to share back and forth with you. Oh, this is the IPs I have today. Black, I mean, blacklist those out of your scan ranges. Oh, this is the ones I have. Okay, document it so that when it comes time to actually generate the report, correlate data later on, you can go back and say, okay, these are the IPs that I had. These are those that you had. Let's go ahead and yank those out of any of the findings just to double check. We don't have anything in there that we don't need. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have a little egg on your face after showing all these vu awesome vulnerabilities that to the customer, and they're like, those IPs don't exist. And as you go back and find the evidence for it, and you're going to say, yeah, those are our systems. Sorry. Not only that, Bob forgot to, dis along with having the mo some of the most vulnerable systems on the network, they didn't harden their systems before they showed up on site. So the, they're sitting there, and the customer comes to the POC comes to them and says, um, we're seeing all this traffic that uh, we're trying to identify what it is. It's all these Dropbox uh, updates going on. We have Skype sessions trying to initiate. And why are you noticing that? Well, we have a zero tolerance for all of those, for all P2P egress on the network. Okay, great. We're sorry about that. Let's turn all those off. It's just another one of those uh, scenarios of try not to be the beacon on the network. Try not to be the the source of a compromise for the network. That isn't that in the long scheme of th uh, great scheme of things. Having a few uh, P2P clients going, such as well Skype, considerable, but still, you're going to have these things going on. That would have been a lot different had they been going out to other services, if they actually been trying to download from certain uh, BitTorrent sites, things of this nature. You don't want to be the one doing that. Have Try to have everything you need for the engagement ready when you go, yeah, things are going to come up. Uh, try to patch your system. Try to have firewalls enabled. Try to lock yourself down. You should be the most secure thing on that network when you arrive, ideally. Not always going to happen, but try your best. wireless. So, Jebediah is like, you know what? I, want, I need a break from doing all the pen testing. I'm going to go out and do some wireless surveying real quick. He gets out his gear, gets his backpack, gets his antennas, gets his laptop going, starts walking around this uh, military-esque facility, nice fence, nice wires, nice guards everywhere. Never a second thought about it. He's walking around going, okay, finding X, Y, and Z. But that's what he thought he looked like. To the guards walking the perimeter, that's what he looked like. Um, situational awareness a little bit. He was a little shocked at when he was uh, cornered by a couple guys with submachine guns, what have you, asking him, who are you, what are you doing, why do you have this large cylindrical object sticking out of your backpack, um, various things like that. After a few phone calls, a few uh, meetings, everything got straightened out. POC said, look, they're fine, everything's good. It was a stressful situation. People got a little agitated, things happened. But at the end, it's a good lesson for keep your get-out-of-jail-free card with you. Keep your contact information with you. Try to make sure everybody knows what's going on, at least your POC, especially if you're going to be walking around a guarded perimeter with questionable looking backpacks and whatnot with you. It's always a good thing. Physical assessments, same thing. If you're going to be trying to break into the back door of some facility, somebody should know that you're doing that. Maybe not everybody, but at least somebody there that you can call that is going to answer the phone when you call. So, not necessarily a lesson learned, but it's just one of those things. Flying out of the country, 
everything's done, they're happy, more or less, engagement's done, everybody's packed up, they're heading out, they're at the airport, they're leaving, and Bob is stopped because the, uh, the one of the security individuals at the airport's like, you can't leave with that. Well, Bob is confused, I can't leave with what? He goes, that hanger. Okay, he unrolls his uh, garment bag, takes out one of the coat hangers. He has three plastic coat hangers in there. Takes one out, hands it to him. You can't leave with that one either. Fine, takes it up. Goes to take the third one. He goes, no, no, that's okay. Not really sure what was going on there. Maybe a show of power. Maybe whatever. It's one of those things. So just be prepared for whatever the situation is going to throw you. Um, along with this, there was another scenario on entering the country, which I didn't touch on. I'll go back and do it now. If you're going to be the one walking into a foreign country that may or may not be on very civil terms with the U.S. government, or any government for that matter, and you're the one carrying in a nondescript black metal rectangular box, which happens to be a, just a collection box that you're going to hook up to the network, but that has no monitor, no keyboard, no mouse, and it's in a large black box, case, lock, you shouldn't be the last one through the security checkpoint. Because you might be stuck there for a while, especially if you don't speak the language. And they're demanding monetary um, disclose, I mean, monetary transaction before they'll let you through security. And you don't have any local currency yet. Just one of those lessons learned. If you're going to be the one carrying that, have somebody with you who, A, speaks the language, B, has went through this before, a little more comfortable than maybe you are going through this, because... That, too, is a stressful one. A scenario when, no matter what you tell them, they will not believe you that it is a computer. Because all computers have keyboards and monitors, they demand. Yeah, fun things happen in foreign countries. So, they get back to the office after the engagement, after all the harrowing adventures they've been on, just to find out one of their co-workers, let's call him Richard, or what have you, had a nice event happen while they were gone. Richard had been assigned to a customer uh, on-site engagement, had left, showed up at the customer about a day late, wearing a stained t-shirt and sweatpants. Annoyed, frustrated, he gave his laptop, every piece of item he had with him from the company, to the customer and said, please, Call my employer, tell him I quit. See ya. And he left. Things happen. Just tell that as a funny little story because be prepared. You might have to, say, head out to a customer location last minute to A, recover your lost items, B, uh, uh, calm down a uh, rather annoyed customer because something really bad just happened with a fellow employee, that may have involved some police and maybe a night in the jail. Who knows what's going on, but it's another one of those. Things happen, get ready to deal with it, and hopefully you're not the one quitting, because if things are getting that bad, you need to talk to somebody. Talk to your boss. Talk to somebody. Maybe he shouldn't have been sent on that engagement. Maybe there's other things going on. Communication wasn't shared. Um, the boss didn't know what was going on. Just better communication and all. Might help out. But at least for the rest of the guys in the company, that was a funny story to share a little bit between them. Like, and it, a little bit of recon over the next couple months uh, helped identify some of the things that might have happened. So they're done with everything. Done with their joking about uh, Richard quitting. Everything like that. They finally get around to writing the report. And issues arise. Bob thought Jebediah had gotten all the screenshots. Jebediah thought Bob had taken all the notes. No one had any notes. It's really hard to write a report without any evidence, any screenshots, any detailed notes. Especially seeing as how this engagement had went on for quite some time, and no one really quite remembered what order things had happened during the external. Uh, some of the detailed information that they should have gathered when they were on site, that kind of information was missing. So, a lot of mind-racking, a lot of uh, 
back and forth, maybe a few phone calls with the customer to try to get another open window to y'all get a few more screenshots, some sharing of information. The report got written. Everybody was more or less happy. Should have been a lot easier. Had they just, as I said before, started sharing information on a daily basis, ensuring that each other knew what they were charged with, making sure you had the notes, make sure you had all the things that you need for later on. Because it really doesn't matter how good your pen testing skills are, how good your uh, assessment goes. If you can't write the report at the end of it, the customer isn't going to really know. Because that is the deliverable that shows up in front of them. That's what they need to hand off to their C-level management. That might be what a version of that they hand off to their um, customer base to say, look, we got an assessment done. These are the kind of things we found. Because that is ultimately the deliverable that goes to the customer. And, of course, when you are writing the report, before it goes out to the customer, make sure that uh, you have the right customer name in the report. Because, like many people, you're going to copy and paste from old reports. You're going to have snippets of canned text that you like to reuse a lot. Inevitably, there's going to be something in there that carries over a customer name, a URL, a website, a host name, something of that nature. Something that is telltale that it isn't targeted at their cu at the current customer. Proofreading, peer reviews, whatever it takes. Do your best to have what's in that report relevant to the customer that it's going to because yeah to have that phone call with the customer saying um why are you showing me all these findings for this set of IPs or this DNS name or whatever that isn't ours great that you did it and great that you found all these things I hope you told that the, the people who own those networks that they have all these vulnerabilities but that's not us thank you That's a very good point. Yes. Yeah, there's any number of things that can go on during engagement, and more times than not, they have happened to a lot of people over the years. But general lessons to pull from this, measure twice, cut once. Verify everything you're doing. Don't just type it in and go just because you feel confident in it. No. Nah. Make sure that what you're doing is what you what you think you're doing is what you should be doing. If you're not sure about the scope of something, or you're not sure about if something uh, should be targeted at this time of day, or whatever the scenario is, ask. Ask the customer. Ask the POC. Ask your boss. Somebody. Try to get the answers. Don't assume. And along with that, you might not know everything. If you do have a question, ask somebody else. They might not know everything either, but at least they might have encountered this before. They might have an insight to it that you don't. Finally, share your mistakes. Yes, it's a little humbling to have to share your mistakes with colleagues, with people, but uh, it's a great thing to do at the end of an engagement. Like, here, here's the things that I messed up on. Here's the things that I messed up on while I was on site. Here's the things that I learned from this. Uh, sure, you might get a few laughs out of it, maybe at your expense, but it might be things that other people on the team, other people in the company hadn't encountered before, might not have known about, or if it, if it was, it might be something that then is fresh in their mind so that they are hopefully not going to make those same kind of mistakes in the future. And it helps reinforce it in yourself. So, general contact for me. Uh, if you have any in interesting lessons you want to share, uh, any things that uh, you've learned over the years that uh, you think might be interesting, Twitter link of uh, Pentest Lessons. I try to share them out there as I go along. It's been a little dormant for a little bit. I'm going to get back to doing that. It's just a great way to share anonymous stories uh, uh, with other friends in, uh, in the industry. It's just a great little place to put that. I've got a few other stories I can share, but uh, before I do that, I want to see uh, if anybody else has anything that they want to share. Anything that, it's sort of in scenarios that you've encountered, things that uh, maybe not be horribly detrimental, like uh, you burn down a building, something of that nature. I don't want to get into any sort of legal issues, but anything, anyone? Jason.
Yes. Another scenario I've encountered in the past, um, doing an external web assessment and test, come across, you're doing your testing, you have scanning, and you find a suspicious URL just through brute forcing, guessing URLs and whatnot, get something blah 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 slash shell dot ASP, and you've got a little text box on the window there, you like, well, great, you type in a command, it returns the output, it's a full functioning web shell. At this point, should you A, what the consultants did, use that to gain access to the network, B, realize that the network is probably already being compromised and alert the appropriate people? Answer is B, which they later realize they should have done because that. But still, it's one of those things that if you're on an engagement, whether blue teaming, red teaming, it doesn't matter, and you come across something that looks really suspicious, don't assume that it's okay. Verify it. Verify the UDP scan is right. Uh, before you go full on calling the FBI, make sure everything is not that it is what it appears. But if you do find remote shells, if you get onto a network and you see that there's remote tunnels connecting everywhere, and you see all this, that might be a good time just to back away from it. Talk to your boss, talk to your POC, and it might be time for them to jump into more of an incident response mentality as opposed to Hey, can you do an exploit? I mean, can you do a pen test on this? Because obviously somebody else has already beaten you to the to the punch on that one. Anyone? Go for it. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Got another one for you. It's one of, uh, I've classified this under know your audience 
and uh, be conscious of um, things that might be embarrassing to your customer. For example, you're on an engagement, you actually gain access to some of the network, you get in there, you get into the directory, and you find some photos, which might be of a uh, humorous nature, might be otherwise, and you decide for whatever reason that those are the great photos that you want to put in your outreach to show that you compromise that system. Not knowing that the photos involved show pictures of the one of the uh, owners of the company, which you hadn't met up to this point, who happens to be in the outreach. Yet another tense scenario going on. It's good decisions not always being made. All right. Um, I'll be around if uh, people want to talk. Uh, like I said, I thought this might go a little short. It's a. Uh, what do I have? Yeah. It's got a couple minutes still to go if people uh, want to have anything they want to discuss. If not, uh, come up and talk to me. And thank you for the for attending. Thank you. Oh.